Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys. I'm so glad to be back with you again for a few minutes uh, that I can share with you a word from the Bible. And I pray God it will be a good word for you. I pray the Holy Spirit shall help me to speak because I believe it's a word God gives me for you. And it's a word I think it comes from the Lord. And I hope and pray that it will bless your life. I want to speak to you on the, on the subject that, that uh, we don't have time. We don't have time. We, we, we must work while it is day. We must work while it is day. The time is so short and we have opportunities today to do something. We need to take advantage of those opportunities. Now John, in John the ninth chapter, uh, verse 4 and, uh, and 5, we read these words. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. The Lord God grant the blessing of God upon this message. First of all, we see that uh, all of us have a work to do. We have opportunities to do the things that we ought to do. And those opportunities are ours to do them while we can. Now time is short, and so we must work while we have that time. The opportunity comes and is gone, and it's gone many times forever. So we must recognize the opportunity and take hold of it while we can. In Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 34, Jesus ta says, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the, the tomorrow shall take thought of itself, for sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient unto the day, you say, not the week or the month or the year, but the day. It's, it's gone in a day, it's gone pretty, pretty fast. Uh, Twelve hours is gone. And so we recognize the importance of working while it is day. Life is that way. Life is so short. I don't feel as old as I am. I believe me, I don't. But the hand of God is with me. And the time has marched on so swiftly. But over in the book of James, the fourth chapter, in verse 14, it says this, Wherefore you know not what shall be on the morrow. So do not say that we're going to go over here in this city or that city and we're going to stay here, there a year and so many uh, months and, and we're going to buy and we're going to sell, we're going to do this and then go do that. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For listen, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little while and then soon vanishes away. It soon vanishes away. For then you ought to say, if the Lord wills and I live, then I'll do this or that. And so we're in the hands of God. Life is in God's hands. The issues, the Bible said, of life and death are in the hands of the Lord. So therefore life is like a vapor that appears a little while and soon gone. Anything so swift, we must make good use of it while we have it. We must make good use of it while we have it. Opportunities come. We must take advantage of them. Opportunities to do something to help somebody. Opportunities to do something to bring someone closer to Christ. Opportunities to help a, a person that is down and needs a lifting hand. Opportunities to do something that will make your life shine brighter for the Lord. Opportunities for education. Opportunities for your employment. Opportunities for the family. All kinds of different opportunities come along. And we need to learn how to take advantage of those opportunities. Someone has said that opportunity knocks, but it doesn't turn the knob and open the door and come in. No, it just knocks. But you have to turn the knob and open that door, and then you come in. So we need to see the value of opportunities. We need to see the value of it. The Bible says that over in, in the book of, uh, uh, of, the, of the fact that, that life is so short because uh, God uh, has a work for all of us, and, and that's important. God has a work for all of us. Now listen to what Jesus said. He said, I must work the works of heaven that sent me while it is day. While the night comes when no man can work. I must work the works of him that sent me. 
Now the Lord is speaking to somebody right now and He's saying to you, I've called you to a certain work. I don't know what it is, but whatever you're doing, you've been sent to do it if you're in the will of God. Jesus said, I must work the works of Him that sent me to do this work. And God sends you and me to do certain works. I believe God has sent me. And a part of my life is to preach the word. And I believe he sent me to put these messages on the YouTube that's going out all over the world. And for the glory of God. And I believe that he's blessing them and making them real and, and blessing them to hearts because the power of the Spirit of God is in it. I believe it. Simple messages. That's the only way I can preach, but praise God, uh, the profound power of the Spirit of God blesses them and changes lives and brings people to the Lord and to truth. The Bible says that opportunity is here for us to work, and we need to do the job He's sent us to do. Now here's something I want to ask of you, dear friend. If you, if you whatever your work is right now, three quick questions as to whether God has sent you to it. Number one, do you feel that you are where you are doing what you're doing today if God had nothing to do with it? You see, you ought to feel that you are where you are doing what you're doing because God has led you to it. And that is important. Because the Bible says in Proverbs, the third chapter, if you will trust the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all your ways, He will direct your path, and He will guide you in your way, and that's important. And then secondly, do you have in your heart a peace? Do you have a peace in your heart about what you're doing? If, you, if, God, if you're doing what God has sent you to do, you have a peace. Because Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, and my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, but I give you peace. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So if you're in the will of God, doing what God has sent you to do, you ought not be afraid, you ought not be troubled, you ought to have peace. Even amid the fact that things sometimes go wrong, you have a deep peace in your heart. Now, number three is, are you doing what you're doing today to please God? Does it please God? Or are you just doing it to please you and uh, your family or somebody? We need to, to know that what we do, whatever God has sent us to do, is something that pleases God. Jesus said, I have come to show you the work of God the Father, and I always know that he answers my prayer because I always do those things that please him. And this is the way we ought to live as Christians, to seek to please God, to please God. And so if those three things meet, if you're where you are because you feel like God has led you, if you have peace in it because God is in it, and if you're doing it for God, number one, then you're where God sent you and God is with you to give you peace. Now Jesus said in this same scripture, I seek not my, I'm sorry, in this same scripture, he said, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I'm in the world, I'm in the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. I want you to hope and I pray that, that, that you have that. In John the eighth chapter, verse 12, then spake Jesus to them, and he said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And the way we see opportunities and take advantage of them is because we have the light of the world. We have Jesus in our hearts. We have light. And so God help us to take advantage of opportunities because we have a work to do while it is day. The night is coming when no man shall work. Now sometimes those opportunities will come to you in a time disguised as problems that seem to be unsolved. Let me say it again. Sometimes the opportunities that come to you will come disguised as problems that cannot be solved. So take advantage of what you can do and seek by the will and the way of God 
that which good can come from that opportunity when it seems to be a real problem. For instance, let me give you this as an illustration. <clears throat> Years ago, <clears throat> during the days of the gold rush in California, and people from all over this country were moving and rushing toward California because they had discovered gold all along the coast of California. And people moved out there. They took their possessions and took out. And they moved in those days way back when, they, when, when, when the West was very young. There was a man named Levi Strauss. And he said to his family, I know and believe that they're going to be out there, those miners, digging and for gold, and they're going to need tents to live in. And so he bought up, spent most of his money, and hauled them in wagons, a, a canvas material, canvas material, and he went out there with the loads of wagon, two, two wagons loaded with them. And he went out there and found out that they really didn't need tents. They had already made makeshifts of their own. But one of them said to him, what we need is pants to work in out here in this dirt and mud. These, we need something heavy to work in. Levi Strauss made pants. He began making pants out of that canvas that he had brought to make tents out of. He took advantage of an opportunity. He thought he looked like he had lost everything he had. But he made pants and they began to sell. And in making those pants, Levi Strauss made a million dollars. More money than he had would make if he had found gold. And see, so today, when you go to the store, you see denims and you're, they're Levi's. That's where it started. He took advantage of something that looked to be a problem and he brought out of it that which became a blessing. I want you to know that you can do that. You can look at something that looks so bad and yet you can say, by the grace of God, I'm going to believe I have the light of Jesus on me. I'm going to try and do it this way and make something good come out of that which looks like a problem. God bless you, my dear friends. Let us say with Jesus, we must work the work of him that sent us while it's day. Jesus is the light of the world, and we're that light, and we must work while it's day. For the glory of God, amen and amen.